position for that protein. It's a simple observation. Okay. So we have talked about the ubiquitin and how ubiquitins work together. So we have seen that this protease mediated process or the intracellular processing that we have talked about is mediated by two processes or two halves. One is the polyubiquitination tagging of the proteins and then the proteasome mediated proteolysis. Now we have talked about the ubiquitin mediated uh, tagging or polyubiquitination tagging. Now let's talk about the proteasome mediated lysis. So first let's talk about the structure of prote proteasm complex. Now here it comes the proteasome complex. It is actually made up with three different structures. One is the central cavity or central body and on both the ends of the central body there is an identical structure. So uh, in this middle part it is called the total tro proteasome complex is called 26S proteasome complex for eukaryotic system and the central cavity is called 20S proteasome system and uh, two subunit parts both the both the ends of the central cavity are called 90s proteasome system so the middle re region is called the cylinder which is called 20s cylinder and the side regions which are identical are called 90s or caps so what we get a cylinder at middle and this cylinder is blocked using two identical cap regions both the directions or both the sides okay so that's the identical structure now what we get here at this central cavity now all the proteasome degradation process is carried out in this central cavity okay so any kind of proteolysis is carried out in in in, the, in between the central cavity using specific restrict uh, specific kind of amino acid sites popping out from the central cavity regions but on the other hand these cap regions are controlling the entry and exit of protein uh, protein parts now protein must enter from one side and it must release from outside now the proteins must be degraded into smaller fragments before it is getting uh, released from outside released from uh, another end so that's a very important concept now here what we can see inside the central cavity it is having two different sections uh, alpha and beta so what we are having we are having alpha at both these ends and two beta at the middlemost region Okay, so 2 beta at the middlemost, 2 alpha at the ends. Now the 2 beta that we get in the middlemost regions, they are made up with 7 different uh, different regions. So 7 different uh, regions, so 7 subunit regions here, 7, se sorry, 7, 7, 14 regions for 2 betas and other 14 regions for 2 alpha. And obviously for this cap region, it can also be divided into two different parts. One is called the base, which is uh, directly attached with the cylindrical cavity. Another one is called the lead which is just acting like a lead of a can it's a, just a, to help to block the entry and the exit force okay so that's the important structure now if we look at here so here it is uh, the central cavity it's called the processive proteolysis site as we've already talked what is processive proteolysis we have talked about it uh, earlier and here it is uh, this cavity of uh, caps uh, this is the base Base is the place for substrate unfolding or the protein unfolding. Remember, protein is need to be unfolded before it enters into the processing cavity. So here it comes a function of base to unfold the proteins. And then this is the region which is called the lead, which for the substrate binding and polyubiquitin removal. Because you are not only need the substrate binding, once the substrate is bound with this kind of proteasome complex, we no longer need to the help of the polyubiquitin tag. So after the binding with this lead, uh, those polyubiquitin tags will be clipped out. So that's another important concept. Now if we look at uh, the structure in much detail, what we can get, here it comes the central cavity. Two of them are alpha, two of them are beta. So beta is having the maximum catalytic activity. Alpha is also making uh, the structure much more rigid here. Here it comes, the structure of beta in zoom view. Here it comes, as you can see, the YOLO regions or YOLO ball and stick structures are popping out. These are the reaction sites or reactive sites for the active proteolytic cleavage. Okay. Now here it comes, the cap region and the lead uh, onto where the proteins uh, are bound. Then the base will uh, allow them to be unfolded. Then it will be entered inside this central cavity. And how the entrance is done is illustrated by this picture. So you can see from this lead, the protein or polypeptide chain starts to enter. And as soon as it enters by unfolding, it comes and reaches to the contact or alpha subunit. And then it will be selectively put inside there selectively put it inside there now once it is inside you can see there are the four blue dots these dots are the reactive catalytic sites now once it is entered the the this this lead is blocked it will block the entry site and it will also block the exit site 
and it will allow this propeptide chain is to be present inside this uh, particular central cavity for a sufficient period of time providing the sufficient pH and temperature so that the proteins are, are degraded properly. So this is the time. So we just uh, push, push the protein inside the central cavity and wait for the right time for the degradation so that if the proteins are not degraded properly it cannot release from this side it, it must not be released to ensure this process this this system is made in this way so that once the polypeptide chain enters it will be trapped here until and unless it will be chopped out into 15 to 18 nucleotide uh, in 50 to 82 amino acid sequences okay so here is the opening channel here you can see the closed channel and no substrate can enter from here so this opening and closing is depending upon this 19S cap regions. Okay, so this is a very very important part, and the cap region is also important for removing the polyubiquitin tags. Okay, and so this is the machinery. This is a very important concept. That uh, and another important concept is that as soon as or as uh, these proteins or polypeptide chains are entering inside, they are getting unwinding. So unwinding is done uh, from one side and enter entrance into into this. Uh, central cavity is done simultaneously and they will be chopped out simultaneously okay okay what we got yes now here it comes about the active site and also about the entry port now if you look at the entry port this is the open entry port this is the closed entry port you know that the entry port is combined with this alpha because remember here it comes once about the entry this is the region now if we zoom into this part and look uh, from this region we get the top view and this is the view of the entry port. This is the open entry port surrounding by this alpha. So alpha is having uh, seven, uh, as I've told you, seven subunits are making alpha and beta. So here seven subunits are making this. So you can see this yellow regions are coming out when it is opening, uh, when it is open for a protein uh, to be inserted. But whenever it is, uh, it wants to close it. So this, this, this is just like a, a shutter. This is like just like a diaphragm of a camera or diaphragm like our eye simply opening and closing and, and it will allow the proteins to be inserted inside okay now once it is inserted inside it will come from this alpha region to this beta subunit now this beta subunit is having a typical kind of a reactive regions like this that the regions are in terminal and the regions are thionine residues which play a maximum important role for this proteolysis part okay now this is made up with threonine so there are this int uh, this beta subunits again there are seven beta subunits and among the seven there must be four five different uh, threonine subunits must be active at a time so that they can cleave these proteins into smaller fragments okay so what it, uh, what is done in this case is threonines are having a hydroxyl group there right it is having a hydroxyl group at its uh, R group position right a hydroxyl in, in its R group so what will be done this hydroxyl can be transferred into this hydroxyl is can be converted into a nucleophile right because if, if the hydrogen is deleted from this place it can be a nucleophile now once it is become a nucleophile this nucleophile can easily attack they can easily attack uh, the polypeptide chain and the polypeptide chain will be degraded now one question can come into your mind that polypeptide chain or the peptide chain is such a chain it is thermodynamically favorable for the degradation of peptide peptide degradation is thermodynamically favorable so why we require the ATP in this case ATP is required not for the degradation purpose actually ATP is required for the movement of the polypeptide chain from the lead region from the 19A subunit to the uh, 20 subunit in this case so ATP requirements is to in, is to trap these proteins onto a place and is to unfold them and you need to transfer it so for this transfer we need ATP ATP is not required for the breaking of this peptide bonds so please uh, clear these concepts on your mind okay so here it comes the path of protein degradation so here it is the protein is attached to this lead region because we know the protein is attached to the lead at first with the polyubiquitin tag now lead uh, verifies that everything is okay polyubiquitin tag is verified and it will be cleaved out this this process is called depolyubiquitination deubiquitination is also important because if these ubiquitins are tagged then uh, this ubiquitin is going to be inserted inside of the proteasome and these uh, ubiquitins are also be degraded we don't want them to be degraded so we must release them outside okay and then after the releasing what we go we get uh, the attachment of this peptide with this base of cap uh, 
once it is attached to the base now here it comes the importance of atp now this base is includes a half dozen related but distinct atps subunits right so base is nothing but an atps subunit so atp will come this will uh, get the energy from atp hy hydrolysis and it will uh, unwind this protein into a uh, open structure right so it will unwind the protein into an unfolded state and then it will not only unwind into unfolded but also it will migrate it will uh, it will uh, what we can say it will force this uh, protein to be inserted inside this uh, central channel so this uh, the importance of base in two way one is uh, the utilization of atp to unwind the proteins second one is the processivity of this unfolded proteins to put them inside the central cavity now once it is put inside the central cavity as you can see uh, the Push, uh, pushing or, ins or uh, insertion of the central cavity with the degradation of protein is pretty simultaneous. So once it is getting inserted and small part of the proteins are getting chopped out each time. So when we get after all these things small proteins a chunk will be released outside of these proteins from the rest or from the opposite terminal of the entry. Now this proteasome is pretty tightly regulated and there is two different sections one is for the entry side and this one the exit, exit side. So during the process of proteasome there must not be any other proteins coming out from the opposite side. It is halted, it is blocked, it is processed. The structure of the proteasome is mediated in such a way you can see the internal structure of the central cavity is maintained in the master way so that sequential uh, protein degradation happens. It's not happen at the same time. It's happening in the sequential steps in processing steps. That's why it is called the processive process. Remember I called it a processive. So this is what we call a processive process. Okay. So it's a, pop, uh, it's a very processive uh, nature of proteasome degradation. Okay. And now let's talk about the last part about the regulation. Now we all know that we need to regulate where, when to degrade a protein, when not to, and we get we need to get a proper signal for the degradation and everything to be ensured that the protein is uh, destined for the degradation. Now here what we get, uh, we get here the normal overview of the protein degradation. Now here it comes the regulation. Now it comes the unfolded or misfolded proteins. Now in the eukaryotic chaperones, what we can do, we are having chaperones and we are also having ubiquitination systems. Now there are two different methods that that we can apply if we are having a misfolded or unfolded protein. One thing is that we can utilize chaperones and chaperonines to properly fold those proteins uh, into perfect uh, native protein form so that they become a functional again. And also we have another pathway is that we no longer need those proteins. We need to just utilize the U1E2E3 system polyubiquitination of that protein and then proteasome mediated degradation of the protein into smaller protein fra peptide fragments. Okay, so these two things can be done. So it's a dependence of the cell. It's the description of a cell, uh, the cell what it needs to do. Now, if it ne needs the protein at the same condition or the same situation, it must not go for the degradation. It will simply use uh, uh, chaperonin proteins and chaperone proteins to refold the protein back its native conformation and reuse it inside the cellular machinery. And if it don't require this, if it don't require this, then what it will do, it will simply add polyubiquitin and make it to be degraded or tag it to be degraded. So these things can be done. So this is uh, the regulation inside the cell in two different machineries. We can, we can remedy that problem or we can destroy what is creating the problem. Simply like that, right? So one is prevention, one is cure, like that situation. Now uh, another important thing I must tell you before, uh, concluding all this topic is that proteasome process and the ubiquitination process is not, is not always harmful. Uh, sometimes it ubiquitination plays uh, different roles. For example, sometimes ubiquitination guard the proteins to be uh, not attached to polyubiquitinated form. Sometimes it protects itself to be attached to ubiquitin ligase. These things can also happen. And also, uh, and also sometimes the ubiquitin tags are helping them for the localization signal. Now as we can see here, this protein is tagged with only one ubiquitin. So that is very important. Mono ubiquitination sometimes give them give a protein two-way advantage. Sometimes this mono ubiquitin can uh, provide the cells a signal, provide the protein a signal for the nuclear transport or NPC or nuclear pore complex transport because sometimes this poly uh, this monoubiquitin act as a signal for nuclear localization or sometimes it can this can block uh, the attachment of polyubiquitin so these things can be happened okay okay so 
uh, that's the overview and uh, not actually overview it's a detailed process of uh, ubiquitination and proteasome mediated degradation and i hope this video helps you thank you